walking the dogs in the evening, so I don't know how it'll look, look like on the video, but it's actually quite nice out here. Quite romantic and, uh, you know, nice sky. Bit of traffic noise, but apart from that, it's really nice. Well, I've just been thinking about nothing. Uh, what triggered this actually was I was I, I sometimes like do this thing where I just like open a book at random if I'm passing it and just read one sentence and then just see if it means anything, you know. And uh, the book I picked up today was a book by Douglas Harding called Science of the First Person. Which yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I think it's interesting, and sometimes I don't. But uh, anyhow, I picked this thing up, and the sentence I read was something like the void. Um, and how the void, there is only ever one void. The void for you is the same as the void for me. It was that kind of sentiment. I can't remember the exact sentence. And I put it down, didn't think more about it for a bit. But what I've just been thinking about as I've been walking here is to do with um, similarities and differences, really, and perspectives and perceptions and viewpoints and situatedness. Because I think that, um, you know, obviously, you and I, whoever you are, um, we have some things in common, and we'll probably look at things in the same way, almost. Particularly things like scientific, some of the similar, uh, kind of simpler scientific facts, at least. We'll probably look at those things pretty similarly. You know, we'll probably look at these facts and and you know, have a good degree of agreement about what we're looking at. But there's always going to be a bit of difference. And once you get outside of strict kind of empirical knowledge really and into the area of the subjective into just experience really just phenomenal experience what it is to be a human being then there's always going to be some variation you know you know even i look at these trees they always look like tattoos these trees but even as i look at these trees you know if you're standing next to me you're going to be looking at a slightly different view aren't you i mean literally you're going to be seeing some slightly different viewpoint but in a, in a more fundamental way as well you know because i'm looking at that tree and recognizing that tree as a tree and comparing it to my abstraction of a tree and doing all those things that you do when you look at stuff but that whole perception that I'm giving it the whole abstraction that I have is made up of all the other trees I've ever seen and um, and whilst you've had probably had similar experiences and you've probably looked at trees not totally dissimilar to that one um, your abstraction is going to be slightly different to mine and if you're brought up on the other side of the world where the trees are very different your abstraction is going to be very different indeed and you're not going to see your experience of that tree is not going to be the same as mine it'll make the same impression on your retina but it'll do something completely different once it hits your brain uh, and all our histories are different our histories of individual trees and our emotional relationships to these things is going to be different so um, you know whilst on a superficial level we see the same tree on every level that counts we don't really and the same goes I think for pretty much everything Apart from one thing, and I think that one thing is nothing, like the void that uh, Harding talks about. You know what I mean? I think I think your nothing is the same as my nothing. I think if I can, if we can, book, you and I can jointly imagine just sweeping that tree from the face of the earth and sweeping all that skyline away and getting rid of that dog and getting rid of this turf and the snow and the sky and just keeping evacuating things from our imagination and keeping stripping the concepts away and just replacing them with absences you know, and keep doing that, keep relentlessly keeping doing that and taking away all of our personal experience and all of our associations and our histories and our desires and our memories and all of our abstractions and we, you know, get really ruthless about that and to really reach a point, you and I, where we've got nothing there where there is nothing left then I think we'll have something in common or rather we'll have nothing in common because you're nothing if we're equally ruthless in our strippings away it's going to be the same as mine nothing there's a plane going past you might not be able to see that plane in the sky a little light flashing like a heartbeat 